This is a case of a hard brown mature cataract with a calcified anterior fibrous capsule and a relatively small pupil. There are atrophic patches on the iris. Now using a 15 degree side port blade, a side port is made. Now under the air bubble, a trypan blue dye is injected to stain the anterior capsule. Now viscoelastic device is injected to fill the anterior chamber. The cystitome needle is now used to initiate the capsular excess. As you can see, there is a difficulty encountered in tearing the anterior capsule, so we preferentially avoid that area. Now, capsular excess is initiated and the triangular flap is folded. As you can see, the capsular excess is performed under the iris. This is done to make sure of an adequately large rexis. Special care should be taken to make sure that the capsular excess does not extend to the periphery and that it should be fully completed. An incision is made at the limbus with a 2.8 mm keratome and a triplanar clear corneal incision is made with equal length and breadth to get a square incision. Now, phaco emulsification is commenced in the phaco 1 mode with the trenching and the debulking of the nucleus. Slightly higher power is utilized to make sure that there is no force exerted on the nucleus. The width of the trench should be one and a half times the thickness of the phaco probe. The tip here is that we should stay within the pupillary margin at all times. Now, switching to the FACO2 mode, the modified chop technique is used to bury the FACO probe into the equator of the nucleus. This is then slightly lifted up and the crack is initiated with the second instrument. And the two halves are separated. In cases of hard mature cataracts, it is of importance to use sufficient amount of viscoelastic device to protect the corneal endothelium. Then the nucleus is gently rotated and using a dialer and a chopper, the other side is also split. Now we have two halves of the nucleus. Now again in FACO2 mode, the probe is buried into the core of the nucleus, slightly lifted up and the chop is then initiated. In these type of leathery brown cataracts, multi-layered cracks are required. So go deep and make sure that the fragments are separate. Now the free nuclear fragment is brought to the pupillary plane and emulsified. The nuclear segment is then broken down into smaller fragments and these smaller fragments are then emulsified. The same process is again repeated by burying the phaco probe into the nucleus by slightly lifting it up and then by initiating the chop. The nuclear fragment is then brought to the pupillary plane and then gradually emulsified. Special care should be taken in such cases to avoid excessive touch of the iris with the phaco probe and avoid undue stress on the zonules. We do not have any cortical remnants. The foldable intraocular lens is gradually inserted into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is dialed into the bag. Now, the iris is retracted from all the sides to make sure that the intraocular lens in all its entirety is present within the bag. Now, the viscoelastic devices are all aspirated.
Now the side ports and the main incision wounds are all hydrated. As was expected in all hard mature cataracts, 6 hours post-operative findings showed moderate SKs. But with the appropriate usage of medications and one week post-op showed a clear cornea, well-rounded pupil and a happy patient. Thank you.